Here's a story you're not hearing in the mainstream, much about in the mainstream. It's a really interesting story, though. Judith Collins, who is the Attorney General, Judith Collins KC, and Minister of Justice, she's being sued. Oh, she's the Minister of Justice, certainly the Attorney General. Um, she is being sued in the Wellington High Court. Well, why is she being sued? Let's find out by talking to Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union, who joins us on the line now. Jonathan, nice to have you with us again. Why are you suing morning, Judith David. Collins, you meanie? We're not uh, suing Judith Collins per se. We are suing the Attorney General, who, yes, at, at the moment happens to be uh, Judith Collins. It's, it's nothing to do with her conduct, but it is absolutely to do with her role within the government, which is as, um, you know, the, the, the chief legal officer in the government. And we are, in, in layman's terms, actually suing the police. This goes back, and some of your listeners might be familiar with the Well, we story, covered Sean, the story, too. unlike many others, yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, it goes back to, to a case that we took on a number of months back now. In November last year, a woman called Lucy Rogers, a, a barrister herself, uh, was, was working on a, uh, on a Saturday afternoon and popped out of her Queen Street office to grab a coffee and bumped into a, uh, a, a pro-Palestinian protest and was just quite taken back by some of the uh, claims that she heard there. Now, if, if you know Lucy or, or anything about her, um, she's not a very political character, and, and certainly I don't think holds especially strong uh, opinions on, on that issue, but just thought there was a little bit of hypocrisy, and, and wrote on a sign condemning uh, uh, p partial condemnation of genocide as evil. And so it was kind of saying, look, if you're going to call one thing genocide, do you have to call another thing genocide as well? And, and she so went down and say, stood on the street with that sign. And, and, and all she did, and all she did was just hold her sign there. Uh, and it, it's uh, not exactly the pastime I would choose, but, but it's an absolutely legal form of counter-protest. And, and Sean, look, if we are going to buy into this value that has really been part of what has created the West to be a peaceful and prosperous place, which is to say, if you think there are bad ideas that are out there, the way you counter those bad ideas is with more speech, not less. If we're yeah, going yeah. To say so Lucy's speech, standing more, there on the side of the street, and what do the police do? The police come up, uh, take her sign off her, rip, her, rip it in half, and tell her that she needs to move off and move away, um, otherwise they will arrest her. And uh, knowing her rights and, and, and being the uh, wonderfully sort of cantankerous character that she can be, uh, she says, well, hang on a second. I, 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 know what, uh, I know what I'm allowed to do here. And, uh, and they say, no, if, if, you, uh, if you do not comply, we will arrest you uh, for breaching the peace which is this incredibly vague uh, set of laws that we, we, we do have here, uh, but, but are really used. They are far more frequently used in places like the UK, where... Yeah, well, we see a lot of... I see a lot of this online. People being quite, obno in my view, quite obnoxious protesters, like stop oil protesters and everything, and people who try and counter-protest are treated worse than the steering protesters in the first place, and, and police are very heavy-handed with them. Well, that, that, that's exactly right. And, uh, and, and what, what we're seeing, uh, which is a really uh, troubling precedent, uh, Sean, is, is there, there are three cases that we're working on right now where individuals have been arrested under very similar con uh, um, contexts, often for breach of the peace. And, and there's this almost this tactic that we believe is emerging where the police will arrest them uh, and, and, and maybe charge them, maybe have them appear before the court once or twice and then withdraw the charges because those first hearings in court are always just kind of uh, uh, formula. Um, 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 for, They're just um, trying to scare people from, from, from expressing their views, aren't they? Th that, that's right, but then they don't have to answer for the charges at all. There isn't yeah. any real accountability. And so that's why we're saying, no, hang on a second, there will be accountability. If you arrest someone and it is a wrongful arrest, uh, we will make you account for that. We will, we will make you answer for that. And, uh, and so in this case, uh, we will be seeing them in the high court, making them explain in what way was it legal to, to uh, destroy Lucy Rogers' property, to hold her, uh, and, and, and then to release her without any explanation? Uh, Sean, my, my, uh, 
I, I would be, I would bet a fair bit of money that says that the police will try and, and settle on this in, in, in the course of the process. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'll, what we're saying from the outset is that uh, we will not proceed. Uh, we will not settle uh, if there is an NDA involved. If there is a non non disclosure agreement. agreement. Okay. What <laughs> is needed here, I think, for democracy and for free speech, though, Jonathan, is a decision, is a precedent setting decision, and a clear exactly statement right. from the police that they will not abuse their powers of arrest like this in the future. That's exactly right. And, and Sean, I think your comment earlier uh, is, is really true in the, in, in the fact that I think um, there is this growing perception that the police don't always play with an even bat. And, yep. and look, I, I want to I I say at one level, um, our police have an incredibly challenging role, and I do not envy them in the slightest. The, the, the role that they play, for example, on Queen Street, where you've got hundreds, perhaps thousands of protesters on one side and, and a couple of people on the other side who, who look uh, being a little bit obnoxious. You could put it that way. Why don't they just go home and keep their opinions yeah. to themselves type thing, you know? Yeah. But, but actually, we have, we have a democratic society because we believe in the importance of allowing the annoyance of people to have opinions. And so I don't, I don't want, uh, you know, our police are under a lot of pressure today and we, we talk a lot about trust yeah, in the look, media. Yeah, look, actually, that's I'm a- not going to buy that, Jonathan. I think they've behaved appallingly on a number of instances around these things. I think they've behaved appallingly in Albert Park. I think they are trying to avoid responsibility. They're, they're now taking a whole lot of complaints about what happened at Albert Park and counter-protesters and saying... The police complaints authority is doing some sort of review. I think they need a wake-up call and this is it.